I've summed up my five takeaways and thoughts about this book in this video. I highly recommend you to read the original book of the author. Please share with me your opinion about this book in the comments below. The Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi is a comprehensive guide that covers everything you need to know about fixed income securities. This book is a must read for anyone who wants to understand the fixed income market, whether you are an experienced investor or just starting out. Fabosi covers a wide range of topics, including the characteristics of fixed income securities, the different types of fixed income securities, and how to analyze and evaluate them. He also provides a detailed explanation of the factors that affect interest rates and bond prices. One of the best things about this book is that it is written in a way that is easy to understand. Fabosi uses clear and concise language to explain complex concepts, making it accessible to readers of all levels of experience. He also includes plenty of examples and case studies to help readers apply what they learn to real-world situations. The Handbook of Fixed Income Securities is divided into four parts. The first part provides an overview of fixed income securities, including their characteristics and the different types of securities available. The second part covers the analysis and valuation of fixed income securities, including measures of risk and return, and how to use them to make investment decisions. The third part focuses on the management of fixed income portfolios, including strategies for maximizing returns and minimizing risk. The final part of the book covers the fixed income market, including the trading of fixed income securities and the regulations that govern the market. Overall, the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities is an essential resource for anyone who wants to understand the fixed income market. Whether you are an investor, a financial professional, or just someone who wants to learn more about this important area of finance, this book has something to offer. For Bose's expertise and clear writing style make this book an enjoyable and informative read. I'd be happy to elaborate on the first point from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Fixed income securities are a type of investment that represents a loan made by an investor to a borrower. The borrower can be a government, corporation, or other entity that needs to raise capital. In exchange for the loan, the borrower pays the investor a fixed rate of interest over a set period of time and then returns the principal amount of the loan at the end of the term. The most common types of fixed income securities are bonds, which can be issued by governments, corporations, and municipalities. When a government issues a bond, it is essentially borrowing money from investors to finance its operations or capital projects. Similarly, corporations issue bonds to raise capital for business activities, such as expansion or research and development. Fixed income securities offer investors a reliable and predictable source of income, as the interest payments are typically paid out at regular intervals, such as quarterly or annually. They also provide a degree of safety, as the borrower is contractual obligated to make the interest payments and return the principal amount at the end of the term. However, fixed income securities also come with risks, such as the possibility of default by the borrower or changes in interest rates that can affect the value of the securities. Overall, fixed income securities are an important part of the investment landscape, offering investors a way to earn income while balancing risks and returns. Here's further explanation for point two from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Fixed income securities come in a variety of types and each has unique characteristics that investors should consider when deciding which securities to invest in. Some of the most common types of fixed income securities include Government bonds. These are issued by the government and are considered to be one of the safest types of fixed income securities because they are backed by the full faith and credit of the government. Government bonds can be issued by the federal government or by state and local governments. Corporate bonds. These are issued by corporations and offer a higher yield than government bonds, but they also carry a higher level of risk. Corporate bonds can be issued by companies of all sizes, and they may be secured or unsecured. Municipal bonds. 
These are issued by state and local governments to fund infrastructure projects, such as schools, highways, and hospitals. Municipal bonds are exempt from federal taxes and may also be exempt from state and local taxes, making them a popular choice for investors seeking tax-free income. Mortgage-backed securities. These are securities that are backed by pools of mortgages, such as those issued by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Mortgage-backed securities can offer higher yields than other fixed-income securities, but they also carry a higher level of risk due to the possibility of default on the underlying mortgages. Other types of fixed-income securities include inflation-indexed bonds, high-yield bonds, and convertible bonds. Each type of fixed-income security has its own unique characteristics, and investors should carefully consider these characteristics when deciding which securities to invest in. Factors to consider include the credit quality of the issuer, the maturity of the security, and the level of interest rates. Here's further explanation for point three from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Fixed income securities come with a variety of risks that investors should consider before investing. Some of the key risks associated with fixed income securities include Credit risk. This is the risk that the issuer of the security will default on its payments. Bonds that are issued by lower rated companies or governments carry a higher level of credit risk. Interest rate risk. This is the risk that changes in interest rates will affect the value of the fixed income security. When interest rates rise, the value of fixed income securities decreases and vice versa. Liquidity risk. This is the risk that the investor will not be able to sell the security when desired or at a fair price. Less liquid securities may be difficult to sell quickly, especially in times of market stress. Call risk. This is the risk that the issuer will call the security before its maturity date, which can result in the investor receiving less income than expected. In addition to these risks, fixed income securities also come with a variety of other factors that can affect their value, including inflation, currency risk, and market volatility. Investors can manage these risks by diversifying their fixed income holdings, investing in high quality securities, and using strategies such as immunization or liability-driven investing. It's important for investors to carefully consider the risks associated with fixed income securities before making investment decisions and to balance the risks against the potential rewards of higher yields and steady income. Here's further explanation for point four from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. When analyzing and valuing fixed income securities, investors often use several key metrics to help them make informed investment decisions. These metrics include Yield to maturity. This is the total return that the investor can expect to earn on the fixed income security if they hold it until its maturity date. Yield to maturity takes into account the current market price of the security, the interest payments, and the principal repayment at maturity. Duration. This is a measure of the sensitivity of the security's price to changes in interest rates. The longer the duration, the more the price of the security will change in response to changes in interest rates. Convexity. This is a measure of the curvature of the relationship between a security's price and changes in interest rates. Securities with higher convexity will have a greater price increase for a given decrease in interest rates and a smaller price decrease for a given increase in interest rates. In addition to these metrics, investors may also use credit ratings and other measures of credit quality to evaluate the risks associated with fixed income securities. These metrics can help investors understand the potential risks and rewards of investing in a particular security and can inform their investment decisions. It's important for investors to understand the limitations of these metrics, however. For example, yield to maturity assumes that the investor will hold the security until maturity, which may not always be the case. Duration and convexity are also based on certain assumptions about the behavior of interest rates, which may not hold true in all market conditions. Overall, these metrics can provide valuable information for investors when analyzing and valuing fixed income securities. 
However, they should be used in conjunction with other forms of analysis and with an understanding of the risks associated with fixed income investing. Here's further explanation for point 5 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Risk and return are two important concepts to consider when investing in fixed income securities. In general, the higher the risk associated with a security, the higher the potential return. However, higher returns often come with a higher level of risk. Therefore, investors need to consider the risk-return trade-off when selecting fixed income securities to invest in. One of the most common ways to measure the relationship between risk and return is by using the Sharpe Ratio. The Sharpe Ratio is a measure of risk-adjusted return that takes into account the level of risk associated with an investment. The higher the Sharpe Ratio, the better the risk-adjusted return. Another way to measure the relationship between risk and return is by using the concept of yield spread. Yield spread is the difference in yield between two fixed income securities, and it can be used to evaluate the credit risk associated with a particular security. For example, if two securities have similar maturity dates, but one has a higher yield than the other, the higher yielding security may be viewed as more risky. It's important for investors to understand the relationship between risk and return when investing in fixed income securities. While higher returns can be attractive, they may also come with a higher level of risk. Therefore, investors need to carefully evaluate the risks associated with a particular security before making an investment decision. Investors should also consider their own risk tolerance when selecting fixed income securities. Some investors may be more comfortable with higher levels of risk, while others may prefer a more conservative approach. By understanding their own risk tolerance, investors can select securities that are appropriate for their individual investment objectives and risk preferences. Here's further explanation for point 6 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. When it comes to managing fixed income portfolios, investors have a variety of strategies to choose from. Some of the most common strategies include Passive management. This strategy involves investing in a diversified portfolio of fixed income securities with the goal of matching the performance of a benchmark index, such as the Barclays Aggregate Bond Index. Passive management can be a cost-effective way to invest in fixed income securities but it may not always produce the highest returns. Active management. This strategy involves actively managing a portfolio of fixed income securities with the goal of outperforming a benchmark index. Active managers may use a variety of techniques, such as fundamental analysis or technical analysis to identify opportunities for higher returns. Active management can potentially produce higher returns than passive management, but it may also come with higher costs and risks. Immunization. This strategy involves matching the duration of a fixed income portfolio with the duration of the investor's liabilities. By doing so, investors can minimize the impact of interest rate changes on the value of their portfolio. Liability-driven investing. This strategy involves investing in fixed income securities with the goal of meeting specific future liabilities such as pension payments. This strategy can help investors ensure that they have enough assets to meet their future obligations, but it can also be complex and costly. In addition to these strategies, investors may also consider other factors when managing their fixed income portfolios, such as tax considerations, liquidity needs, and diversification. Overall, the strategy that an investor chooses for managing their fixed income portfolio will depend on a variety of factors, including their investment objectives, risk tolerance, and market conditions. It's important for investors to carefully consider their options and to work with a qualified financial advisor or investment professional to determine the strategy that is best for them. Here's further explanation for point 7 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Interest rates are one of the most important factors that affect the fixed income market. Interest rates are determined by a variety of factors, including inflation, economic growth, and monetary policy set by central banks. 
Changes in interest rates can have a significant impact on the value of fixed income securities. When interest rates rise, the value of fixed income securities decreases as investors demand higher yields to compensate for the higher interest rate environment. Similarly, when interest rates fall, the value of fixed income securities increases as investors are willing to accept lower yields in a lower interest rate environment. In order to manage interest rate risk, investors may use a variety of techniques, such as duration matching or convexity hedging. Duration matching involves matching the duration of the fixed income portfolio with the expected duration of the investor's liabilities, which can help to minimize the impact of interest rate changes on the portfolio. Convexity hedging involves adjusting the portfolio's convexity to offset the impact of changes in interest rates. In addition to interest rate risk, fixed income securities also come with other risks, such as credit risk and liquidity risk. Credit risk is the risk that the issuer of the security will default on its payments, while liquidity risk is the risk that the investor will not be able to sell the security when desired or at a fair price. These risks can also affect the value of fixed income securities. In order to manage these risks, investors may diversify their fixed income holdings, invest in high quality securities, and use strategies such as immunization or liability-driven investing. Overall, the fixed income market is complex and influenced by a variety of factors. By understanding the risks associated with fixed income securities and using appropriate risk management strategies, investors can make informed investment decisions and potentially achieve their investment objectives. Here's further explanation for point 8 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. The prices of fixed income securities are influenced by a variety of factors, including changes in interest rates, credit risk, liquidity risk, and core risk. Changes in interest rates have one of the largest impacts on the prices of fixed income securities. When interest rates rise, the value of fixed income securities decreases as investors demand higher yields to compensate for the higher interest rate environment. Conversely, when interest rates fall, the value of fixed income securities increases, as investors are willing to accept lower yields in a lower interest rate environment. This relationship between interest rates and the value of fixed income securities is known as the interest rate risk. Credit risk is another important factor that can affect the price of fixed income securities. Bonds issued by higher quality issuers are typically less risky and have lower yields, while bonds issued by lower quality issuers are more risky and have higher yields. When an issuer's credit rating deteriorates, the value of its bonds may decrease as investors demand a higher yield to compensate for the increased credit risk. Liquidity risk is the risk that the investor will not be able to sell the security when desired or at a fair price. This risk can be especially pronounced for less liquid securities, such as those issued by smaller companies or those with longer maturities. Call risk is the risk that the issuer will call the security before its maturity date. This can result in the investor receiving less income than expected and can also make it difficult to find a suitable replacement investment with a similar yield. Overall, the prices of fixed income securities are influenced by a variety of factors and investors need to carefully evaluate these factors when selecting fixed income securities to invest in. By understanding the risks associated with fixed income securities and the factors that affect their prices, investors can make informed investment decisions that are appropriate for their individual investment objectives and risk preferences. Here's further explanation for point 9 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. When investing in fixed income securities, investors may consider several different types of risk management strategies to help mitigate risk and potentially improve returns. Some of the most common strategies include Diversification. This involves investing in a variety of different types of fixed income securities to spread out risk. By diversifying, investors can potentially reduce the impact of any one security or issuer on their portfolio. Duration matching. 
This involves matching the duration of the fixed income portfolio with the duration of the investor's liabilities. This can help to minimize the impact of interest rate changes on the portfolio. Immunization. This is a more advanced form of duration matching that involves constructing a portfolio with a specific duration that will match the expected cash flows of the investor's liabilities. Convexity hedging. This involves adjusting the portfolio's convexity to offset the impact of changes in interest rates. Liability-driven investing. This involves investing in fixed income securities with the goal of meeting specific future liabilities, such as pension payments. This can help investors ensure that they have enough assets to meet their future obligations. In addition to these strategies, investors may also consider using a variety of different types of fixed income securities, such as government bonds, corporate bonds, and mortgage-backed securities. By investing in a variety of different types of securities, investors can potentially spread out risk and improve returns. It's important to note that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to risk management in fixed income investing. The appropriate strategy will depend on the investor's individual investment objectives, risk tolerance, and other factors. It's important for investors to carefully consider their options and to work with a qualified financial advisor or investment professional to determine the strategy that is best for them. Here's further explanation for point 10 from the Handbook of Fixed Income Securities by Frank Fabosi. Thank you for your interest in this book. Please leave your feedback on these thoughts in the comments below, or just put a like on this video. It will help me stay motivated and make more videos like this. In the description of this video, you may find links where you can purchase this book.